Hello, welcome to Word for today. If it's your first time of being here, welcome. God bless you. You've done the right thing to click. Thank you for clicking. But if you've been watching me all this while, thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Consider to subscribe if you have not subscribed to this channel. If it's your first time, consider to subscribe to this channel. And let us share the word together. Let us enjoy the word in the Holy Ghost. Thank you for being here. Today we are talking about prayer. Because Jesus said men ought to pray. God wants us to pray. He has asked us to pray. So I'm going to be talking about prayer. Because, because he asked us to pray. He is listening to us. There's a reason he asks us to pray. Because he's listening. He's hearing. He's listening and he's, he answers our prayer. He wants to answer your prayer. That's why he asks you to pray. Jesus says, men ought to pray. Men always ought to pray and not faint. In other words, don't lose hearts in every situation. He said, men ought always to pray. Men always ought to pray in all time. Say, pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Because the Lord your God is hearing you. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants you to ask. He has asked us to ask. What is prayer? Let us find out what prayer is. I'm reading from the Rhapsody of Reality. By a man of God, Pastor Chris. He said, We are made to pray. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. That's Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not faint. Communication, I read. Communication is probably one of the most important activities in life. There is, however, one form of communication that is most, that's most important. I am talking about the communication between man and God, which is established through prayer. In Luke chapter 18, the Lord Jesus taught the people extensively on the importance of prayer. Man is a spirit and his needs are essentially spiritual. This is why he is always craving for that spiritual contact with the one who is described as the father of spirits. And that is God, our heavenly father. Hallelujah. Some people pray only when they need a miracle. That's wrong. If you are a Christian, you need that continual fellowship with God to function effectively. Otherwise, every other thing you do will be meaningless. The Bible says, In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he, Jesus, went out and departed into a solitary place and there he prayed. That's Mark chapter 1 verse 35. It says Jesus rise up early morning. He wakes up very early in the morning to go and pray in a solitary, solitary place. That's in a quiet place. This is the reason it's good for us to have quiet times. Even our Lord Jesus, the Bible lets us know in Mark chapter 1, verse 35, that he rises up very early in the morning to go to a quiet place, solitary place. That's a quiet place where he can be alone to talk to our Heavenly Father. Jesus did it. So it is also good for us to have quiet times. Very important for us to have quiet times. Jesus took prayer very seriously. Why he was on earth because he understood the importance of communing with the father 
On another occasion, it was recorded that he prayed all night. That was in Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Jesus prayed all night. Though he was the son of God, he did take prayer for granted, even though he was the son of God. Jesus came to this earth as the son of God. Even at that, he didn't take prayer for granted. Understand this. You were made to pray. The moment you understand and embrace this truth, your life will become richer and you'll be more productive in all your endeavors. Yeah. Hallelujah. Prayer isn't just a time to ask God of things. It's a time to commune or fellowship with him and receive direction for each day's activities and challenges. For that reason, you should take your prayer life very seriously. Take your prayer life more seriously. Rise up early to pray and pray as often as you should. It is wise to do this. Very wise. So when sometimes we think the whole world is crumbling on, upon us and we cry, we shout, we lose hearts, we, we complain. No, the Bible didn't tell us to complain. He said we should pray without ceasing. He said we should pray. He said men ought to pray. Men ought always to pray and not lose hearts and not faint. In other words, you should always pray and don't be devastated. Don't be in desperation. Don't despair. Don't despair. When situation faces you like that, when you face challenges, don't complain. Don't be in despair. Don't be perplexed. Pray. The Bible lets us know that Jesus started with prayer. He ended with prayer. He ended with prayer. Yeah. When he was crucified. We remember. Because the Bible tells us that. That. While he was crucified. He was praying. He still prayed to God. Oh Lord forgive them. For they know not what they are, they are doing. Before he gave up his ghost, before he gave up the ghost, he cried to the Father, Why had that forsaken me? That was a prayer. Before he even went to the cross, the Bible lets us know that he prayed that blood, the, the, the sweat from him was as thick, was dropping as drop of blood in the, in the uh, uh, garden of Gethsemane. He prayed always. As before he gave up the ghost, before he gave up the ghost, he said, Father, in your hand, I commit my spirit. Committed his soul to the Father. So he was always praying. And that's, if we are Christians, if we are Christ-like, Christian means Christ-like. If we are Christ-like, we should always pray. Pray, we shouldn't be in despair. And his prayers, Christ never cried when he was praying like we cry every day. He said we should give in all things, we should make our, in my, my previous topic, I, to, I talked about in all things, we should let our communications be made known, our requests be made known unto the Father through supplication and thanksgiving. Not crying. Thanksgiving. Thanking God. Hallelujah. He also tells us that in all situations, we should thank God. We should give thanks in every situation. That's prayer. So, we shouldn't lose heart. That's what he's saying here. That men ought in uh, Luke, Luke chapter 18. That's where Jesus taught us how to pray. He said, he talked about prayer. That men ought to pray. Don't lose hearts. That if you pray consistently, 
your situation will change. That why? It will prepare your hearts to receive answers to your prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. So prayer isn't just to ask God for things. Prayer is not only because you want to ask, Father, do this for me. Father, do that for me. Father, you want, I want this. Father, I want that. No. Sing unto the Lord. Sing praises unto the Lord. Thank Him. Give thanksgiving. Just pray, worshiping Him, thanking Him. Father, oh, I thank you for your wonderful day. I thank you for you giving me life. I thank you for the air that I breathe. I thank you for... For, my, for divine health that is in me. I thank you because I live. I thank you for the food that you give. I thank you for making our plants grow that comes into food for us. I thank you for the life of my children. I thank you for the life of my husband. I thank you for the life of my father, my mother. I thank you for the life of my sisters, my brothers and sisters. I thank you for the life of my wife. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Be thankful. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us take the prayer together and say after me. Dear Father, I thank you for the privilege of prayer. I commit myself to a lifestyle of prayer today. I declare that as I pray, I receive wisdom from your spirit and answers to my request in Jesus name amen god bless you for today's edition till i see you next time in my next home and if you have not subscribed to this channel kindly do so god bless you thanks for watching and bye for now Yes, that was the fourth day of a seven-day prayer challenge with Sister Ify Success. Thank you guys for being part of it. Bye-bye.